Alex. Uh, so hi everyone. Um, we have my uh, rep friends, we're also hiring, so. <laughs> seen this uh, guy in a red t-shirt or you or anybody from Graham. Uh, so, uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, how to build compile time safe uh, uh, dependency with uh, Noodle. So Noodle is an uh, open source project from Uber. Uh, so we're going to talk about it today. So my name is Alex. I'm an ISO engineer at Graham. Uh, a little bit of history for me is uh, I was on holiday in Singapore and I attended this meetup. Um, Mainly by accident, uh, and I've met some guys from from Grab, our uh, engineer Edge manager and uh, previous mobile uh, engineering lead that invited me to Grab, and here I'm staying two years there. <laughs> um, so uh, let's talk about uh, uh, dependency injection. So uh, there are going to be three three things I'm going to talk about. So first is uh, what is dependency injection, and uh, why we should be using it. Why it should be helpful for. It. Uh, building a clean uh, and uh, uh, building a better apps. Uh, second, we will talk about Noodle DI system, uh, which uh, which is intended to help us uh, reduce some of the boilerplate code that we should write and uh, uh, help us uh, writing DI code faster. And we'll have a small demo. Uh, so, uh, what is dependency injection? Uh, why should you use it? So, as uh, an article on Wikipedia says, dependency injection is a technique whereby one object supplies uh, dependency from, dependencies from another object, which is a fancy thing to do to say, uh, fancy way to say uh, that just uh, provides some stuff in initializer or uh, inject through setter. So there are um, there are three components in, uh, in dependency injection. One is a, uh, one is dependency or uh, the service. Uh, that we need to inject. And another part of the dependency injection is a uh, is a client that is using the service or dependency. And then there's an injector, or basically it's the place where we provide uh, service to the client. So what does it mean in practice? Uh, let's look at a pretty common example. I'm writing my project for the first time, and I'm but yeah, I'm going to do just a URL session share, did it task with URL, do all things at one place. Um, and uh, it's that for several reasons. First is, uh, it's pretty hard to test because I'm writing, I'm hard coding my URL request, writing the new controller, so there is no way for me to uh, simply write some mocks and provide some data uh, in my test so I can, uh, so I can check that my Classes work inside spec. Uh, second is I'm trying to couple to this uh, uh, using backend. Uh, what if I want to get data from, um, for example, uh, core data or any local storage or shared preferences or uh, any other place? So how we fix it? So first we need to decouple, uh, abstract our uh, getting data from backend with something simple, so something like uh, that will hide the implementation details. So we'll create a protocol that will be like a simple API. Hey, so the new control will say, hey, my, here's my post ID. I want to load the post uh, details, and uh, I want to get a callback when uh, when the when you get all information. Uh, so second, we will uh, we will move the code that we initially created to the controller, move it to the service. So we'll create a class that adopts this protocol. We will move the implementation to the uh, uh, to this class. Uh, so it's no longer lives in the context of our controller. So uh, it shouldn't uh, controller shouldn't uh, be aware of how how the implementation is uh, looks like. So th uh, third, we need to update initializer. Uh, so we can also uh, fade and inject the service by setter, but in this way uh, we can have no optional type of the service, so we'll always know it's there, uh, it's not gone, and uh, uh, less thing to check. Uh, so we'll initialize our view controller with the post service, 
which is no longer a uh, concrete type, it's no longer some data task or um, uh, I don't really, you know, doesn't really know where the data is coming from. Uh, so next we need to uh, inject the service to the client, uh, basically just um, pass the implement, the instantiate the post service, uh, and pass the concrete implementation uh, by protocol. So next we can uh, clean our code. Uh, we can remove the previous implementation uh, and uh, use the service that will provide the clean API. Hey, get my post by ID so I can, when I receive a callback, I can check all of this an error, or if I get a post and I can show my details, or I can uh, show an error if that's the case. Uh, so uh, that gives me advantage of actually write uh, pretty clean unit tests so I can create a simple mock implementation uh, that I can predefine my expectation. I would say, here's my result. Uh, I can also keep track of how many times the um, the data being loaded. So I can also, so here is not uh, shown, but I also can track um, what post IDs are being passed uh, to the service. So next, I can back my unit test, I can uh, instantiate the post, I can set it to the mock uh, implementation, and then uh, when I uh, call the beauty load, I expect, uh, I expect my service to be called, uh, and then I expect to, uh, I said that my uh, post was titled, my post will be, uh, will be returned, so uh, I also can check now in a synchronous way uh, that my data is set up as per my expectations. Uh, yeah, so as uh, shown in examples, it improves the stability, so I can have uh, a mock that can uh, work synchronously, so I don't have to set up uh, expectations and uh, uh, wait, wait uh, for a few seconds but, uh, and hope that I will not have flight test in my CI. Um, so it provides this company whenever I want to replace implementation uh, with something else. So here is a, uh, it was a bit loading data from the backend, but it might as well be loading data from the um, database or uh, just the mock implementation as a, as an described example. Uh, and also it helps removing unnecessary logic. So when you think uh, about uh, removing uh, logic from one place to another, uh, you you make your view controller cleaner. You you focus more on uh, what uh, uh, your view controller or uh, the logic module or whatever uh, architecture you're using. Uh, so your module only focuses on stuff that matters at this point in time. Uh, so what should I inject? Uh, actually, the list can be endless, so I have pretty much anything uh, that is being used by the client, uh, whether it's just a simple uh, feature flex or uh, user settings or uh, calls to the uh, API uh, could be injected. Uh, so uh, how can Needle uh, help us with that? Uh, so as I mentioned, it's an uh, open source project called Uber. So their main features of, uh, of Needle is it's a compiled time safe, uh, which uh, actually means that if the code compiles, then uh, it means that uh, it works. So you will not have any um, unexpected behavior in runtime. Uh, you will not have any pressure. So the data is guaranteed to be uh, where it needs to be. Uh, it also uh, has a, a pretty good performance, so even on large code bases, uh, the, uh, it works pretty fast. Uh, so uh, because it's leveraging code generation, uh, it can provide the compile that safe, and uh, um, the way it's written, it's uh, the generator works pretty fast. Uh, so it's also compatible with any iOS architecture, uh, or uh, you can also use Needle for Backend projects or for Mac apps, so it's actually architecture and platform agnostic. So whatever project you have in Swift, you can use Needle. And also it encourages hierarchical structure. Um, so for example, if I have, uh, imagine your app is a, is a tree of uh, nodes or a tree of features, uh, and each uh, each node actually uh, evokes uh, creating another one, uh, and uh, uh, 
basically it's a tree of, you can think of a tree as a dependency, so each node can introduce some other uh, new component or new service that can be provided down the tree uh, level. Uh, so it actually contains of uh, two parts. Uh, first part is a uh, is a Needle Foundation. It's a Swift framework that provides base classes, interfaces, um, with protocols uh, that we will use uh, later when we'll construct the dependency tree. Uh, yeah, sorry. And uh, second one is a uh, is a common line tool um, that actually generates uh, accessors, so it acquires uh, uh, all things up. So to set up, it's pretty simple. You can uh, you can install a uh, needle command line tool through Brew. You can also get it from the top. Uh, so second, you will need to uh, add needle foundation uh, framework to your project. Uh, so needle foundation they, they support all um, uh, popular fancy um, package managers. So you can use CocoaPods, you can use uh, Firetouch, or you can use uh, Swift package manager as well. Uh, so when you when you set up you, when everything is set up you need to uh, run generator so needle has like simple interface uh, you call needle generate then you pass the path to generate the file the, the file where which will have all generated code uh, in one place and you also need to pass uh, the path to your source code which will reversely uh, and uh, needle will go through reversely the uh, all Swift files and uh, look for uh, components and construct um, uh, construct uh, accessories. So after you, if you have an empty project, then you go ahead and uh, uh, generate uh, first uh, generate the file. Uh, it will have to it will just have one uh, function that you would have to call uh, in your app delegate. So here's where you register your provider factories. Uh, that will um, uh, that will help you in your dependency management. Uh, so let's start. To, so first, you need to add the initial component. A uh, component is a dependency container that will hold all, all your dependencies that you would have to pass to your children that uh, that consume them. So for for root components, you need to use uh, so the the interface is the following you each component should be inherited from component class, uh, which has a uh, generic um, protocol associated with it. Uh, for first one, we don't have any uh, dependencies, so we, we use uh, empty dependency protocol provided by Google Foundation, as well as we need to create each component should be created to the parent. Uh, and of course, for first uh, for root component, we don't have any parent, so we use the system uh, empty component to uh, bootstrap certain component. So I also can, uh, here I can, component can also act as a builder if you want. You can have a builder separately, but in this case, uh, I'm just using the component as my builder, so I can construct root view controller. And uh, I will update my app delegate, app delegates with a uh, root component which will get the root view controller and install instantiated for um, in window. So, and from now, the process of uh, setting dependencies will be the following. For, for your component, you will uh, declare a dependency, then you will run middle generator, and it will automatically create all the accessors for you. Uh, so, for example, I have, a, I create a new, new component, uh, which is a home. So I have a home view controller uh, that I want to uh, provide a uh, loader service to it. So uh, I, had, I create a home dependency, which is, should be um, a uh, dependency protocol. Uh, and then I, I basically write a requirement. Okay, I want to get a uh, loader service from my parent. So if I uh, and then I can declare, uh, I construct my home component uh, in, in, my, uh, in the parent. Uh, I create a home component with a parent, which is a self. Uh, in this case, it's a root component. Uh, and then I, I run generator again. Uh, so Hi. Because, 
the way new works is uh, if you, lose, you declare a dependency and then it looks up the tree to the nearest parent which has the same name and the type and it will generate the code that will uh, wire things up. Uh, so because I haven't created uh, any any component in the, in the tree, uh, right now it doesn't contain this dependency, it will uh, show you uh, show you an error which you uh, will see like, okay, there's a missing uh, logger service with the type logger service. Uh, so I can go ahead to the root, root component and uh, create this dependency. Uh, so the, because the type and the name should match uh, 100%, so I should write it in the same way. And then I uh, create the object which confirms the logger service uh, protocol. Uh, here I'm using shared um, keyword, which is basically a, a closure that uh, will uh, return, in this case it will return just once. So for example, if I have multiple children use, using the same service, uh, only one instance of that service will be created. Um, you can remove the shared, uh, and uh, for each, uh, for each um, ch child that will use the service, uh, the new instance will be created. So you, you, it's up for you to decide whether you want to have one instance or multiple ones. Uh, so now I can, uh, in my home component, I can create my home view controller right now since I declared my dependency uh, in the dependency protocol. I can uh, take it from um, from dependency and uh, pass it to my view controller. So now um, the home view controller can use it inside. Um, so let's um, let's see a small demo. I did set up my um, my dependency tree. Uh, so here is uh, how uh, generate this file looks like. Uh, so here I can see that I have home dependency, <coughs> and it uh, gets the logger service from the root component, which is the nearest uh, nearest parent in, in the tree. So if I go ahead and remove all that, um, okay, sorry. So I, I call legal generator uh, and then uh, it's this one? <laughs> okay, so it's uh, generators again. So course compiles. Uh, so this project is a, is a simple track record, for example. Simple uh, expense record that I uh, I will use. Come on, next code. I think you can do it faster. Okay. So actually, I I, I used the uh, the new for my project, and uh, I'm pretty happy about it. But there's still a few places that I can. Um, I can fix in you know, order to make uh, code more clean. Where is this one? Okay, uh, so here I have a login form uh, with some, some information I want I need to use for uh, text my app. Okay, here I have my transaction screen, I have my profile, sorry. And uh, here I'm, I see the email that I entered in when I log in. And I have my name that was downloaded from backend. Uh, so, but if I go to profile view control, I can see that my user is actually, uh, is actually returned, uh, get it from the uh, shared instance, which is a global, um, local single, single tone, uh, which is actually a bad practice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
just remove it because we shouldn't do it. Uh, so here I'm going to declare the uh, user property that should be injected. Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we, we shouldn't receive it from uh, from singleton? So I go to my profile. I have a component declared for it. Uh, so I, I I declare in my uh, profile dependency that I want the user to be uh, passed from the parent. Uh, so now I need to now I need to uh, pass it to my controller through initializer. So now I see an error. Which clearly something is missing, so we go back and generate stuff again. Oh, sorry, that's too small. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit better. Uh, but anyway, so I didn't receive any error. That means that uh, somebody in the in the dependency tree already declared this. Uh, 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 this value. So now I can uh, can go and check. Okay, so I have a user already, and I am not taking it from the uh, from singleton. So if I run my app, I expect everything to work the same way as it did before. Session. That means that, uh, like, 
like uh, because like, let's say for each VR session, I want to have a different cache mm -hmm. or a different time up, or different. Of, I mean, any kind of different configuration. So at the point where you can start business A, you basically should create another business, uh, another URL session, right? So it's uh, okay. So it's like, let's say when I start business A, I will have the business A parent component. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Where else? Uh, on shout and blow. Uh, you mentioned that the media will have the hierarchical view of our application. Uh, you also showed us the tree where we have uh, login and home scope. Mm -hmm. But most of the applications are never in a tree structure, it's always a complex graph. Because uh, some of the view controllers may be pushed from the two other places. So what happens if, uh, if a view controller has multiple parents? How, in that case, the different PA will be okay. to be there? Uh, so, for example, if you, uh, if your video or your sub screen was created in one hole and then uh, parent as it was closed, it produced this dependency. Uh, so, and if you want to associate it from another place where, uh, if you go out of the tree um, structure, you will not find it. That means it will generate uh, an error. Basically, because uh, it's not find find the fancy up the tree. So now you have two choices. Basically, you can uh, in parallel log, right? You create another instance of this dependency, or you move creation of this dependency up to the upper level, uh, which is a shared um, uh, parent for both uh, uh, both flows. But then I have to repeat, uh, suppose if it's a, uh, on the fifth level I have uh, two components which wants to call each other, but they are also called from the uh, different parents. Then I have to uh, So two view controller which can be shown from different screens. Then you have to declare some protocol to communicate between those two in parent like common parent, like nearest one. Uh, but you shouldn't, they shouldn't access each one directly. You should go okay, through so, so the tree. Okay, okay, so it's always from the top down. You yes. have to create another branch of the tree yes. to make sure that it is. Thank you. Any other questions?